So I'm at a bow house here and they have a couple new brands. This one is a Gardol. It looks very similar to the Angel. And then this one is a Hurricane. <laughs> but they have Makita McCulloch. This is the Elite 450, which is the Husqvarna 445. And this Stiga. They're obviously pretty cheap chainsaws, but uh, I've noticed this brand. I've noticed it a lot. Looks cool. I like it. Feels good. Feels good. It's got a temporary, uh, you know, momentary switch. Well, that's nice. So, um, I don't know who makes these. I'm not sure. Mm, just says Stiga. But, uh, anyways cool little saw it feels good feels as good as this McCulloch 450 so anyways there you go looky looky what I found a whole Yonce Red display this place is called Hornbach And guess what they've got? I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. <gasps> what? Look at that. Oh my God. Pretty reasonable price too. You know? Dang. If I hadn't already bought the uh, Echo, I might be coming home with that guy. I'll have to. Oh, those are mine. Done. Done. I done. I will purchase these, and I will be the coolest guy because I have Yonce Red suspenders. <laughs> I'm such a dork, but it's fun to be a dork. That's cool. Look at that. I've already got one of those, these things. Honestly, it doesn't work very well. But look at that, that's the whole belt system. I might have to get that. We'll see. Oh, that's a good forest helmet. Oh, oh, earmuffs. Look at that. I'm definitely getting something else. So happy. <laughs> I'm back. All right. Once again, kid in the candy shop. Kid in the candy shop. I want to show you guys what I picked up. Um, so, first off, so the deal is Yonce Red is not being made anymore, I believe, worldwide. What you saw there was a um, uh, display of leftovers. And uh, clearly, they had stuff that hasn't been sold yet from 2017. Everything there on that display, all of the chainsaws on the tags, it says 2017. So, anyways, what I ended up getting. Always wanted these. I've actually looked for these on eBay and all that stuff, and I couldn't find them. So, um, anyways, suspenders, that's all they are. But, uh, but they're Yonce Red suspenders, so now I don't have to, I, you know, I, I always wear my uh, Carhartt suspenders, and they're fine, but these say Yonce Red, so they're better. <laughs> and um, I always use, if you see, watch the channel, I always use earplugs, and, uh, but I've been meaning to get me a good set of earmuffs, uh, because I do know that they're better. I, I know that they're better. Um, but I 
don't feel like spending a whole lot of money on a set of earmuffs. Uh, and I couldn't find anything I really wanted. You know, but I did. So this this shield, you know, I'm, I just got it on there now, for now. Right? But these are Yonsa Red earmuffs. <clears throat> and um, so, and they work so well. Oh my... What? I can't hear you. Okay. <laughs> they work fantastically well. But this face shield will pop off because I'm still going to, I'll use sunglasses, safety sunglasses, you know. Uh, but it, it works well. But, um, so anyways, I'm happy about that. They were pretty cheap, about 20 euros, which is about 22, 24 dollars, something like that. So, um, I think that's about what they were. So now I got cool Yonsa Red earmuffs to keep me from going deaf. And um, one final thing, and it turns out, I didn't know this before, but there was a competition that was going on for best mother-in-law of the year in the world. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> I know that I know what you're thinking, and you are right. I am spoiled rotten, and I what? My mother-in-law bought this for me. Yes, it's it was amazing. Um, so she has, and you know, I, I have done a few things here around the house. She made this cool art sculpture that was getting cracks and things, and and I fiberglassed it and stuff, and she needed to give me nothing, absolutely. But she's a very generous person, and she likes to do stuff, and she knows, she knew, that, you know, whenever I saw that, saw, you know, they were, they did come over at some point and saw me just ooh, gushing, right? But, um, so she went ahead and got it for me, and here we are, gonna do an unboxing. So I, I've already unboxed it, but... <laughs> So this is the second unboxing. Oh. And so this is the very first brand new Yonsa Red I have ever had. I've had, you know, all, I, all of mine are old, used. Um, lightly used, but still older. They look so good when they're fresh out of the box. That color of red is just so damn nice. So this is a uh, 2258. Um, same thing, only slightly different as the Husqvarna 555, and which is same thing, only slightly different as the uh, Husqvarna 562 XP. So, anyways, I. <sighs> I am so happy right now with this, and I want to run it so bad, but I can't. Not right now. So, what we have to settle for is drooling over it. Um, one thing that I found very odd right away... And maybe this, maybe this is just the way it is. Maybe it's like this because I'm in Europe. But um, it came with an 18-inch 325 bar and chain setup. Um, that's very odd for me for a 60cc saw. Uh, I know that these things have more than enough power to pull a, a 20-inch 38 setup, and that's what I would normally think would come with it but over here they're not they're just not in love with that whole bigger is better type of mentality they uh, if you can get it done with a small saw you should be using a small saw that's the way they are that's uh, their mentality which is very practical and I love it One thing that I am pretty certain about is 
unlike the 562 XP and perhaps the 555, I'm not sure. Um, the 562, I believe, almost 100% sure it runs a large mount, the large Husky mount, where this is a small mount. Um, why they changed that, I'm not, I'm not quite certain. I'm not certain. But it does have captured bar nuts, which is very nice. It's just, I mean, you can easily deal without them, of course. But whenever you got them, it's, it's nice to have them. It's, it's just nice. And to me, that's what these John Sreds, that's what they're all about. Why would anybody buy a Yonsered instead of a Husqvarna? Simple. Because Yonsered are nicer. Um, that's my opinion. That's it. We're, that's it. <laughs> They're, um, I see these as the gentleman's chainsaw. You know, I just do. I see them that way. They, uh, Husqvarna will wear a suit and tie. Yonsered is a tuxedo. Yep, we're good. So, yeah, it's, it's very odd that it would have a uh, 325 chain set up. Um, but... I have no problem with it. This red is just gorgeous. It is a nice, like, blood red. believe I have this. So, uh, a viewer of the channel, Barry, he lives close by, and I do believe he just recently got a 562 XP. So, once this thing is nice and broken in, oh, oh, that's too tight. It's no oil, but I'm not running it. So, we'll just leave it like that for now. So, we'll, we'll definitely be able to do a test of which one's faster and stuff. Um, what I want to know from you guys is, can I put a 562 XP top on this? Um, I mean, I know that I should be able to. It appears in the photos that I see, I might have to do a little something different here. Um, maybe, maybe not. I, I don't know. But, um, I know that... The 562 XP has a higher top cover, and that higher top cover um, allows for a better filter setup. And it might be something that I'm interested in down the road. Maybe, maybe not. Um, but either way, I, I, I'd like to know if it'll work. It does appear that on this side, um, it might be a bit wonky uh but the top rail is right there and i know that the uh, husqvarna follows that top rail and it might be really just put it on there i, I think that it is i think it's just as simple as whoop, put it on there but we will find out hopefully one of you guys will tell me if uh if you can swap them out with ease if so 
then it might be something that I go after to put the XP top on here, dye it black, of course, so that it looks proper, and uh, and I can run the upgraded air filter setup. Or it may be something I don't don't even waste my time with. But man, she's sexy. She really looks good in the sunlight. Definitely need to upgrade the uh, the fuel and oil caps to the flippy caps. They're so much nicer. And yeah, it would have been nice if it was the 2260. Um, but my experience with the uh, 2152 versus the 2153, there's so little difference. So, so little difference. It's not worth going out and buying a new cylinder just to have the upgraded model. Um, but you, you know, your guys' experiences may have been different and uh, please tell me about it. But one thing's for sure, uh, I, I, I doubt that this thing will stay stock for long, especially because I, I don't have any warranty whatsoever because I'll be taking it to the States. Um, and there are no Yonsa Red dealerships left that I know of at all. So anyways, I'll port and polish it up. And then it'll pull like a madman and be awesome. But so you guys know if you follow the channel that I have the uh, Echo uh, 590 Timberwolf. And I, I I really enjoy that chainsaw. And I am looking forward to porting it as well. Uh, but now that I have this saw, I wonder how my feel how I'm going to feel about the echo um the timberwolf because this one you've heard me say it before the only the only thing bad that I really have to say about the echo at all is it it's big for a sixty c c saw it is honking big and heavy um and i I've never liked that though the rest everything else power is great. Uh, reliability is good saw. She's fantastic. Got it at the right price too. My gosh. Um, but uh, this one is significantly significantly lighter um, than the 590. And I'll be very interested to see if uh, this thing performs as well as the 590. I think it will perform as well as I, I think likely it will perform better than the 590. I don't know. That could be my own personal um, biases uh, that is leading leading me. But I do really wonder, now having this, what it's going to make me feel, uh, how it's going to change my feelings towards the Timberwolf. So um, we'll see. Uh, my... My natural inclination is to think that I will immediately feel like I have no need for the Timberwolf whatsoever. <laughs> um, but I don't know. It's a great saw. It's a really good saw. Um, but if this thing can pu pull as much power as it does and is lighter and feels better in the hands, I'm going to be a very happy boy. Um, I'm already a very happy boy, you know. Uh but yeah, I look forward to running this one for a very long time. A very long time. And I will try and keep it in very good shape. Which I do that with all my saws. I, I, I'm, I am not... I'm not hard on a saw. A, because it's just my personality to, to use them, not abuse them. Right? So I'm, I'm, I'm good on a saw. Plus, I've got so many that they share the workload, you know. As much as I like this, I've got so many other saws that I'll go, I think I want to run that today. And then you pile on top of that. It, I'm not exactly a professional who is needing to do this eight hours a day every day, you know. I do a, I do cut a lot of wood, um, but I'm not a professional that's going out there and making my living doing cutting so my saws tend to stay in really nice condition but yeah god ah. 
So now with Yonce Red, what I have, um, first off, I have the uh, 2153. It's actually a 2152 that has been upgraded to the 346 XP new edition cylinder. And it's in very good shape. I call that the baby doll. That's my little baby doll. Great, great saw. It's just an absolute pleasure to use every time I use it. So I have that. Um, I have, of course, the 49 SP. The 49 SP is almost exclusively a wall hanger. I usually will only use that once per season. You know, uh, it's in it's in fantastic shape. And I like to pull it out and run it every now and then, and that's it. So I, I it is definitely not a work saw for me. Although it could be. It still runs flawlessly. It is a beautiful chainsaw. Those things. You know, I've never really liked the phrasing of they were ahead of their time. I'm like, oh, no, they weren't. They were just the best of their time, you know? But that's me being weird, you know, you know, backseat driver type of stuff, little things that I'm like, nah. Anyways, but if there was ever a chainsaw that I felt was ahead of its time, it was the early John Reds, all of them. But the 49, X, uh, the 49 SP and the 70E specifically, those two models of chainsaws is what created the modern chainsaw. They were excellent. Just excellent runners. They produced good power. They produced good RPMs. But good RPMs. They had uh, minimal vibration. Uh, they had the upright cylinder design. Uh, they were just absolutely fantastic saws. And they looked stunning. So those right there are excellent. So well, anyways, I'm rambling, rambling, rambling. <clears throat> I have <clears throat> a 520. I think it's a 520. It might be a 510. But that's, uh, uh, I had gotten that to be my son's chainsaw. But I don't know. It The fuel tank is part of the construction and it gets hot and it i believe what it's doing is uh vapor locking it's never been the most enjoyable saw to me and it's pretty weak uh so i don't really care for that one honestly that one i want to sell that uh i have a john's red 490 all right so that is the hot rod little the three cube hot rod uh it's a great little saw I have had a 2255. Yeah, I have had a 2255, but all that is a 455 Rancher. Nothing wrong with them, but there's just not a whole lot right with them either. They're just simply a good solid saw. That's it. Um, I have the 2171 Cutter's Edge Firefighter Saw that I've uh, that would be my like premier chainsaw. I I think I love that chainsaw. And now I've got a 2258. So I've got some cool Yonsa Red chainsaws. Very cool. Mm. I love it. All right. That's enough for this video. I got my suspenders. I got my earmuffs, and I got my chainsaw. At home, I also have Johnson Red chaps. So, Johnson Red for the win. My chainsaw lineup podium. Johnson Red is number one. Love them. Excellent quality, and the style is fantastic. Number two. Number two goes to Poland. I have so much fun with the Poland. Poland reminds me a lot of Chrysler um, because they will go out there and just do something goofy. Like when Chrysler came out with the, uh, what they call it, Panther Pink. We're talking this is like 1970, maybe 71. I think they had the Panther Pink. 
that you could get. It was literally like Pink Panther Pink. Uh, the Plum Crazy Purple, Sublime Green, all of those colors. No one else was doing that kind of stuff. And they really came out and just punched everybody in the gut with this loud, obnoxious colors. And some people like them, some people don't. But my point is, is they'll roll, roll the dice. They always have. They will roll the dice and come out with something and go, hmm, let's call it the Predator. Let's call this one the, uh, what are they? There's another one called the Hawk, like Super Hawk or something like that. That stuff like that, I mean, I think it's very cool. I think it's very cool. You know, you have the wild thing, of course, you know. Um, my, the Tim Allen bad boy. That's cool. Timbermaster. Um, uh, farmhand. They, they did cool stuff like that. So, Poland is very enjoyable from a collector's standpoint because they have cool, unique things like that where they would step over the line and be in your face. And if you like that, then that then you, you love them. Um, but also, they're really fun to collect because people still think they're junk. And and so you can get good prices on them. Great. They're, they're the best collector chainsaw that there is. If you want to get into the hobby, get into Poland's and buy them cheap and enjoy them and have fun. Third, normally I would say Husqvarna, uh, because if I like Yance Red, obviously I like Husqvarna, and I've got that 592 XP, and it is awesome, but if we're talking brands here, brand, the brand of Husqvarna to me is kind of like a wet noodle, you know, uh, they're great chainsaws, obviously, I, I this is a Husqvarna, I know. But the brand appeal, Husqvarna is not very appealing to me. Um, they're just, they're like cornflakes without any sugar. You know, they're just kind of, eh, eh. Uh, and that, that, that kind of bothers me. So I'm going to say that my podium is going to have Yance Red in the number one spot, Poland in the number two spot, and Echo in the number three spot. We're going to oust Husqvarna. And we're going to move in there with Echo. Because just a few short years ago. We're talking like three years ago-ish. They did not have the 7310. They did not have um, the 4510. The 4310. All of this, these new Echoes that are coming out right now. I feel like they have tremendously raised the bar. They have really raised the standard of what um, what a good chainsaw can be in the 21st century, you know? And that right there is awesome. And then, of course, the, the looks department, they're fantastic. They look great. Um, and you know what's crazy? I'll, I'll tell you just a short second here. So, if you haven't seen the video on this yet, you should check it out, the unboxing of the 4310 Echo. This thing is stunning. Uh, somebody posted a, a, a comment that uh, they, you know, get excited about the Echoes, but then whenever they finally are about ready to buy it, they can't get over the plasticky feel of them. And I understand that. Um, I do understand that. You can grab a hold of both of these saws. saws. And like this trigger, it's just so nice. This one, yeah, it's there's a plasticky feel to it. I understand that. But what I want to tell you uh, is don't fear that. You get used to it quickly, and then it becomes completely normal. And it is not an indication of quality. These things are fantastically good quality. The plastic is very good. 
so you don't have to worry about quality. Um, but there is a difference in the feel, right? The Swedes, it's just like with automobiles. This is a Toyota. This is a Honda. They're fantastic. However, the devil is in the details and a lot of things. And one of those, the detail that is missing from this guy is the polished feel that a Swedish saw has, as well as a German saw, um, as well as the, the, the steel saws are quite excellent as well. And so the overall fit and finish is what you call it. The fit and finish of the Swedish saw and the German saw as compared to the Japanese saw, um, it is there, it is real. These things do not have the same fit and finish in the feel as the Swedish stuff does. However, in quality and in makeup, they're second to none. Right now, we have three major brands that we can pull from for excellent quality saw. And Husqvarna, uh, Stiel, and Echo are all three completely tied whenever it comes to absolute quality. The quality of all three of these saws, I would not say that any one of them has an advantage over the other. There are little things that give personal preferences, but as far as one being better than the other, I don't think it exists. This is exceptional quality, so is that, so is a steel. Right. If you watch the channel, you know that I don't really get off on steels, you know, but that's just my personal preference. I am no fool. They make excellent machines. Different models have different issues, of course, but overall, they're fantastic. Um, so, but anyways, that's probably enough rambling. And your buddy, Bodie. The Novice Lumberjack is very happy today. All right. Let me know about the top cover. Will the uh, 562 XP top cover just pop right on this without any problems? Other than, well, it's orange, but don't worry. I can dye it. I can dye it black. No problem. Um, so, yeah, let me know. I'm very, very interested in knowing uh, if I can just simply bolt it on there. Because if I can, then yeah, I'll probably do it and uh, and get a higher flowing air filter and all that jazz. Huh. Uh, tschüss. <laughs> that means see you later in German.